Hello everybody and welcome to a new plant zoo video and today we're going to be making a nocturnal animal pack concept so I've done a few of these for different DLCs and I thought it was about time we discussed a nocturnal animal pack so there's a whole variety of different animals that could be featured in this kind of pack and I narrowed it down to eight although you could potentially say uh, 12 so sort of like a grassland animal pack sort of thing with five different exhibit animals but uh, yeah, let's see what the Nocturnal Animal Pack could bring and the update alongside it. So our first animal is the Eye Eye, by far my most requested nocturnal animal that we could get. These are a lemur from Madagascar and they are one of the weirdest animals you could ever see. With long bony fingers and a gremlin like face, they're certainly one of the most bizarre primates on the planet. And since they're a primate, that means they are related to us. These guys are not too common in captivity and have very special requirements, but there are a good few zoos in particularly Europe that I've seen that house eye eyes, and I'd certainly love to see this lemur make it into the game. So our eye eye is the first animal in this pack. Our next animal consideration is the bird slot. So this is the black crown night heron. So this is an animal from Eurasia and the Americas that is often overlooked in zoos, yet it's often always there. They're a very common animal to see in sort of tropical aviaries and sort of just wetland aviaries in general. But these guys have bright red eyes, particularly the males, and of course a black crown of feathers. But these guys are certainly one of the most interesting bird picks I've ever considered as we don't really have many wading birds except for the crown crane and the flamingo we also have the moot swan but birds are gradually becoming a lot more common in the game and I think the night heron would certainly be a good pick here and yeah I'd just love to see it so the black crown night heron makes it into the nocturnal animal pack our next animal is the kinkajou or honey bear it is the only other carnivorous mammal that has a prehensile tail aside from the binturong. However, these guys don't really eat meat much, they rather prefer honey, nectar, and fruit. So these guys would be a very cool addition as, even though they don't have very uh, interesting colors, they are certainly one of the cutest animals that, from Central and South America. And you heard that right, it's a Latin American animal. So we certainly need a lot more of these and kinkajous are one of the most interesting nocturnal animals from the region. And I think that would be a very cool addition to a nocturnal house. And so the honey bear or kinkajou makes it into the nocturnal animal pack. Our next animal consideration is a marsupial in the Virginia opossum. So this guy is a marsupial from the Americas. So particularly North America and Central America. So they also have a prehensile tail. However, unlike the kinkajou, it's bear much like a rat. But these guys are not rodents, they are marsupials, they carry their young in a pouch and often on their backs. Opossums can give birth to many young at a time and will carry their joeys on their backs for quite a long time. These guys are one of the most interesting woodland animals from North America and they're sort of like a, a quadrant of uh, North American animals from the forest. So like you got the, the ones that I identify, the raccoon, the striped skunk, the North American porcupine and then the Virginia opossum as sort of that classic four forest animals from North America and I think it would be really cool to see this guy enter the game. This is sort of shaping up to be a prehensile tail themed pack as the Virginia opossum makes it into the DLC. Our next animal consideration is one that I know a lot of people would really like to see and that is the serval. One of the most interesting grassland cats from Africa and certainly one of my personal favorites. With big radar like ears, they listen out for prey hiding in the grass. Their long legs allow them to spring onto prey with a great jump that is similar to that of a caracal. And this would somewhat be a clone animal as it would probably utilize the same rig that the caracal uses. And yeah, these guys are one of the coolest cats. I would certainly love to see the serval ads in the game. I'm very familiar with them, I've seen them quite often. And I think that would just be a really beautiful cat to bring to life. And so the serval is, I think, the largest animal we have in the pack. 
So it would be great to see. Our next animal is often confused as a cat. This is the African civet, often dubbed the civet cat. But these guys are not actually cats. They are much more closely related to animals like the binturong and I think the fusa as well. But these guys are very interesting as they are arboreal, but they don't, I, be, I don't believe, have a prehensile tail, although they, although they might. Actually, no, that, that can't be right. Vince Rong, Kinkajou are the only ones. Yeah, so these guys use their long tails primarily for balance. But these are one of the largest of the civets, if not the largest, bigger than many of the small civets you'll find in Asia. But these guys are a really cool addition, and I would certainly love to see these guys. I'm not too familiar with them, but they are a very diverse pick that is probably the most obscure in the pack. But I know there are a couple of people who would love to see the African civet. And so this cool animal, the African civet, makes it into the pack. Another popular Latin American animal that we could see in this pack is the Southern Tamandua. Certainly an animal I would really love to see add to the game as the giant anteater we currently have does not climb trees. However, this guy does and has a prehensile tail, as you can see, wrapping around the back of the tree there. They also carry their young on their backs, much like their larger cousin and the earlier Virginia opossum. I don't know whether carrying young on their backs would be a feature that could be added in this pack, but if it could, I would certainly consider it, but I've got a few other features that I think would take precedent over it, although it would be awesome. But yeah, the Southern Tamandua would be very cool to see. And so the termite munching southern tamandua makes it in as the last habitat animal of the nocturnal animal pack. Our exhibit animal consideration for the pack is the toke gecko, one of the largest of the geckos in Southeast Asia and, in my personal opinion, the most colourful. With light blue coloration and orange spots, these guys would be a striking addition to the exhibit boxes. And geckos have often been one of the most requested reptiles to see added to the game alongside chameleons and cobras. And I'd certainly love to see their, their sticky feet in action, clinging to the glass walls of the terrariums and being a marvel to look at for our guests and for players. And so the glass gripping, wall climbing toke gecko makes it in as our exhibit animal. I do have one final consideration for the pack. This being the dwarf crocodile, the smallest of all crocodilians from Africa and the smallest in the world. So these guys are much smaller than the current Cuvier's dwarf caiman and one of the main reasons I'm suggesting this guy is, well, it's, of course it's nocturnal, but these guys are also a possible alternative for players to pick as we shouldn't be so confined to the Cuvier's dwarf caiman as our small crocodilian in my personal opinion. It, it would allow this slot to be more diverse and allow players to pick between these two. Which one do they want? And like if they wanted a dwarf crocodile in a Congo exhibit, they'd be able to have it. And yeah, allowing choice between the dwarf crocodile and the third smallest crocodilian in the dwarf caiman would be pretty cool to see added in the game. And crocodiles are always done really well these days in Plant Zoo, so I'd love to see another one being done. You could say these four species are final considerations for the pack, but these are actually part of one of the update features I'd like to discuss. Potential standalone exhibits of the nocturnal variety. So these exhibits are pretty common in nocturnal houses where you've got these smaller animals, particularly mammals. And we don't really have an exhibit mammal aside from the walkthrough exhibits where we have the fruit bats and the sloth. But these guys, like the Sugar Glider, Naked Mole Rat, Common Vampire Bat, and Pygmy Slow Loris, would be really cool additions here as they're not really the best additions for a habitat and probably wouldn't be, <laughs> they wouldn't look right in the exhibit box. And the walkthrough exhibit would be far too big for them. And I don't think people would like a vampire bat fluttering around their ears. But these guys would be great additions in a standalone exhibit in a nocturnal setting. So allowing you to turn the lights off and almost have a day and night cycle and these animals would somewhat function on a loop and sort of like the sloth that we currently have and the fruit bats but it within an enclosed space of a little bit bigger than the regular exhibits like they could vary in size i don't know but maybe like an 8x8 exhibit box although the naked mole rat probably wouldn't need that i don't know but uh Either way, these guys would 
probably be best in this kind of exhibit and they certainly fit the pack really well and I wanted to include them as the main roster but I don't know how having multiple exhibit animals would be taking up space of much larger and for some people more exciting habitat animals but let me know what you think of this feature. Certainly one of the most highly requested features in terms of building pieces would be allowing them to block light and actually allow us to create truly dark buildings. So a nocturnal building setting would be a pretty cool feature. So on the pieces of the building, you could have th this little tab which says nocturnal on or off or just block light on or off. And this could allow for the sunlight from outside to be blocked and for the interior to be dark and for the nocturnal exhibits to be, well, a lot more in the dark than we currently have them as we really have to do a lot just to block out the light like put terrain over the building and such. But it would be very good to allow these building pieces that we currently have to actually block the light and allow us to create a dark nocturnal setting for our animals. This next feature involves two new enrichment items. So the first being a log feeder, one that the I.I. could use its specialized hunting method to utilize, tapping along the wood looking for grubs, or the tamanduas and, and giant anteaters to bust in with their powerful claws. These would be very cool features that would allow these animals to replicate their normal behaviors. And yeah, it would give them more natural enrichment. My last enrichment item is a honey feeder. Whether this take the form of honey inside a log for the bears, or as a simulated flower for animals like kinkajous, or both. I think these features would be really cool for animals that have a sweet tooth and allow them to get a a good taste for honey in their exhibits. I think that would be really cool. You could have a really real Winnie the Pooh animal in your zoo and you could give them as much honey as you want. This next feature is probably one of the most interesting. So this is the animal nest box. So these would be placed up in trees or as part of a climbing frame that small animals like kinkajous, tamanduas, opossums, raccoons, binturongs, all of those sort of arboreal animals could use. These would function as sort of the climbing animal equivalent of the burrows and like the burrows there would be a small and a large variant for the different animals that would be using them. So the large version would be used for animals like kinkajous and binturongs and raccoons while the smaller ones could be for animals like tamanduas and opossums. But I think this would be a really cool feature and really lean into that nocturnal theme as many of these animals would sleep through the day and giving them a little hidey hole to, to sleep in would be a pretty cool feature for these animals. My last feature is more of an ambient feature. So fireflies and giving us the opportunity to light up the grounds of our zoos with these beautiful insects. So I think this would be a really cool feature to really add to the, to sort of the spiritual feeling of the night. And fireflies are certainly one of the more iconic nocturnal elements. And I would just love to see fireflies just glimmering in the dark of our zoos at night and see the animals wandering around in the shadows while these fireflies do their thing. But yeah, let me know what you think of this feature. And so there you have it. That is the Nocturnal Animal Pack idea. So it's, it's an interesting one, but I would certainly love to see the nocturnal elements be explored a bit deeper in the game, allowing us to create true nocturnal exhibits and have dark buildings and give these animals a real place in our zoos because nocturnal houses are, are currently sort of lacking in the animal diversity that they can currently have and i think a few more animals like the ones i've mentioned here would be great additions but let me know what your favorite idea or animal from this pack that you'd love to see in the game would be so would it be the eye eye would it be the tamandua let me know in the comments down below as for now i guess i'll see you all in the next video Bye bye